The Web 3.0 Paradigm. We've got Vilma Matilla, who's co-founder at Speakers Sire. Welcome on stage. Mario, CEO of NFT Technologies. Ermakov um, from Dexport. Stefan from Oak Security. And Josh Johnson from Beyond Meta. Welcome to the stage, Papa. guys. Do you hear me, guys? Yes, excellent. Uh, very glad to be here. My name is Slava. Sir, was not able to pronounce my full Slav. It's Vyacheslav. But you can, sh can shortly call me Slava. I'm the CFO of Dexport, uh, play to earn Web3 uh, platform. Thank you. Glad to be here. Hey everyone, name is Mario, founder of IBC and co founder of NFT Tech and CEO. So we're bringing access to the NFT space for retail investors. Uh, our plan is to list on the stock market, uh, which is expected pretty soon. Hello everyone, I'm Vilma. I have been in the crypto space for the past eight years and I'm the founder of Node Capital as well as Fire.org. And we aim to bring a sustainability to the blockchain space by re redefining the consensus with a new layer one. Hey guys, thank you so much. Uh, Joshua Johnson, uh, Beyond Meta, and uh, from US, uh, Austin, Texas, between here and Austin, and uh, helping basically the Spatial Web 3 uh, movement community um, uh, middleware to connect Web 2 to Web 3. Um, so looking forward to exploring more of that. And uh, also Metapods, basically a, a shipping container connected as a portal to the metaverse to help uh, the largest brands in the world onboard more people to their metaverse. So. All right, so, so I'll kick it off with the first question. Um, and then you can, if you want to come up with the next question. <laughs> but I'm thinking, you know, we saw in 2017 when the blockchain kicked in, everyone wanted to decentralize everything, yeah? And then there was blockchain everything from Uber to Deliveroo on the blockchain. Now the next, um, you know, the hype now is Web3. So let's maybe start off by defining Web3. I'll let you kick it off. Defining Web3, and then how, you know, how do you see the adoption kick in over the next few years? Like, where is it going to start, and where is it going to be in a few years? Right. I think the Web3 uh, is still early. So it's 95 before the dot-com bubble, right? So I think there's going to take many iterations around what Web3 is, um, what that looks like over the next five to 10 years. So especially in Dow software, for example, that's going to take on a life of its own in the next five to 10 years. So I think Web3 is really decentralized community in a way that incentivizes. We call it ownification. So ownify, ownifying is owning your own data, owning your own future, and how you do that within a community that's bigger than yourself. And I think that that's really what, what we're looking at and decentralized. Yes, Web1, text, Web2, content and text. Web3 interaction community assets, internet of value. I would say that the challenge in adoption is definitely accessibility. So we need to learn to build more accessible, no code, easy to use interfaces and frameworks for, for everyone to be able to adapt them and respect what is the new here in Web3. Definitely it's an interaction between community and interaction between uh, public anonymity and, and assets. Yeah, thank you guys. Uh, I'm, I'm very agree with uh, the previous, previous speakers and for me Web3 is the completely new layer of the internet uh, which made uh, the things accessible for a lot of people uh, in the fully decentralized way. For example, my company is bringing uh, completely new prediction markets to the space of the Web3. Uh, and the migration uh, from Web2 to Web3 is going very slow from my point of view. And uh, we try our best to uh, become the best instrument for crypto mass adoption and adoption of the decentralization. That's it. Cool. So, uh, so I'll answer my own question and then, and then you take the next question. But I'd say, you know, Web3... To define it briefly, in the 50s, 60s, 70s, we had the efficient movements of electrons. You know, it was a tech boom. And then 90s, 2000s, 2010s, 
the efficient movement of, of um, what was it? Uh, electrons, bits. So that was the information, web one, web two. And then web three, in my eyes, is the efficient movement of value. So it opens up a whole new paradigm. Um, now, where I see the space head, and you know, I ask that question because I love answering it, is um, I always remind people, the human brain overestimates the short-term impact of innovation, underestimates the long-term potential. We're going to see the same thing here. Like, there's a lot of people here at the event, and they've got big dreams. You know, I think most of us will agree. And those dreams will materialize. But I think it'll take a lot longer than most people expect. And for all investors here, you know, you should probably know this, otherwise you're screwed. Like, these things take time. Um, so that'll be my two cents on this. Uh, but yeah, man, I'll, I'll let you take the next question. Well, I like how you go back to value. I think value is seen in different ways, right? So you have, you have time, energy, influence, and money in terms of how you quantify value, right? And I think that's the beauty of Web3 in general. If everyone's a millionaire, then you value money in a different way. So maybe influence for the DAO is how you structure the influence for that DAO. Um, and not just money. It's not how much money you have. It's how much influence and how much you're, you're adding to the whole DAO itself, right? So I think that's the beauty of being able to, as you gamify things and gamify Web3, and commerce is taking on a new life form, right? Through DAOs and brands, being basically a biggest fan of, of a brand, maybe Apple or Nike. What does that look like in the next like 10 to 15 years for the biggest brands in the world to you guys? How do you gamify commerce and allow the communities to say, I'm the top 100 fan of, of Nike or Apple? How do you then integrate with that brand and make it your life? In the same way you can make Ethereum or Cardano your life, right? and you live and breathe it, I make money off of it, and that becomes my life. In the same way, how do you then in the future, how do you see gamifying commerce in that way? Being able to make Nike or Apple your life, in a sense. So I would love to see what you guys, and how it connects Web3 and the metaverse and the, and the spatial web, how do you gamify commerce in that sense? What do you guys see in the future? What does that look like? Do you want me to take it first? Okay, so I, I love that question as well. So I, before getting into crypto, I was in e-com, so I come from that space, and I still have an e-commerce company. Company is doing really well, so I love e-com. I used to love e-com. Now I'm crypto. So I thought about it, like how to leverage Web three for my e-commerce company, and it was tough. Like I, you know, I, I didn't want to go after the hype. I wanted to see if there's any practical value. I think in the short term, it's the concept of owning a piece of the community. Because community building has existed for a long time, and it's been one of the pillars of marketing for a long time. A business is a community. Community creates value. What brings value to a metaverse is a community behind it. So if you think about it, what brings value to a city is people adopting that city and, and become building communities within it. So I'm like, all right, so how can I leverage the concept of ownership to build that community? The way I looked at it is, the, a basic way of looking at it is launching a, a token because everyone's freaking launching a token. Could be an NFT. Any way to represent that value and represent a piece of that community. And then starting to build a full stack on that token or NFT ecosystem. So like everyone's launching NFTs as a one-off thing. I think NFTs is just a paradigm to build a business around it. It's like, you know, you don't launch a website and then you're done. No. You launch a website as step one. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, can we launch an NFT or a token and no rush? And we have to take our time. And then start building a whole environment ecosystem around it. And then for anyone, any skeptic, they're like, all right, why do you need a token or an NFT? Because it's a decentralized way to give someone a piece of that community. So now they're more incentivized to build it. So I think that in the short term, at least, that's how I see it. In the long term, I think it's going to evolve in ways that make me, what I'm saying now, laughable because it's so, so archaic yeah. compared to where it will be. But that's how I look at it. Yeah. And to you guys, how do you gamify commerce in the future? I would say, first of all, integrating uh, interoperability yeah. between the chains for everyone to have accessibility and being able to be part of it. Secondly, integrating traditional commerce aspects with and uh, taking off business steps because if you want to improve 
uh, disrupting and improving is different. If we are just improving, we are not disrupting the business systems. If we are disrupting, we are implementing new ways of skipping steps in the business processes. And that, w I s that is how I see uh, Web3 is implemented in traditional technologies. Changing the ways how we operate from human uh, behavior perspective as well as uh, changing the ways how people perceive value. Uh, people need to start perceiving value in fractional pieces of NFTs. People not need to start perceiving value on, for example, group purchase of an asset. Uh, people need to start perceiving value in something else than USE. And in addition to that, I would definitely say uh, Linking Web3 aspects to, for example, phone number, linking Web3 aspects, for example, to your own website domain, where comes decentralized domains, and why, for example, the phone number? Because telecommunication companies have this big challenge of phone numbers becoming completely unrelevant. Web3 is the way to make things that have, have, don't have relevancy anymore to regain relevancy through monetizing aspects that were not monetized before. Perfect. At the end? Yes, as for me, I personally think that uh, the main important step uh, is to give the people right of a choice. And the Web3 concept is giving uh, this to people. Uh, without, uh, with anonymity, first of all, and without any pressure for, from each side. Uh, as for NFTs, I think uh, we should uh, exp invent uh, the more ways to monetize it, uh, try to find the partnerships uh, with the huge brands which uh, occasionally come to the market uh, at the end, and uh, that's it. Yeah. I think to answer the question to gamify commerce, I think for us at, at Beyond Meta, it's twofold. Uh, of course, we have the middleware and helping that. We launched at South by Southwest uh, a big Metapod. Basically, it's container ships that we call por Portal to the Metaverse. And it's helping the top 100 brands in the world actually onboard more of their fans. So the top, let's say, top 100 fans of Nike or, uh, let's say, Adidas or Apple, right? They need a, a DAO structure solely just to onboard and be a better marketing arm for that brand, right? So we basically give the tools, the picks and shovels, for um, that infrastructure. So being able to connect them as a portal to the metaverse, being able to, whether AR, VR, XR, connecting it through Roblox or Unity or Unreal, et cetera, I think that that's giving those tools or onboarding is very important right now, the picks and shovels. So being able to say, okay, the first thousand people uh, giving $1,000 each for this DAO, then, hey, they can be a part of being the founding member of the Nike Metapod DAO, right? And you're solely making your life onboarding people into the Nike Metaverse, right? And so I think that that's, that infrastructure will come a long way in the future to see how the DAO software organizes that infrastructure. Um, and especially for us, we launched the first green hydrogen um, race car, basically. And it's going to be uh, driving in eight months. And so being able to have not just Formula One, Formula E, uh, but Formula H, <coughs> green hydrogen, is fully sustainable. So having, uh, for example, in the Metapod, having the simulator to, to drive in that in Forza. But for us, having playable NFTs in, in the game driving, having that to be able to be staked in a DeFi protocol as well. So having that uh, playable NFT that you can drive, you buy your $2 million, let's say, Ferrari, and you actually can use that in a DeFi protocol and actually stake it and loan against it. So I think gamifying commerce is that next level of being able to interact and in interoperability cross-chain. So you choose which chain and choose which smart contract, and then the playable NFTs are gamified in your real life. So. Love it. Um, all right, I'll end it. We've got four minutes. So I'm going to end it with um, a question I'm going to steal from a podcast. Many of you might know it. What's one thing you believe about the space that most people would disagree with you? That's a pretty sexy one. So, so I'll kick it off because I planned it. Um, and I forgot what I want to say. <laughs> what was my answer? I had a good one. Um, Why don't we pass it on to yeah, go ahead. You have one. What's one thing you believe about the space? You want to kick it off? Well, I, I would say that uh, the one thing that I think that for me being able to, I guess that's a good, great question, to think about 
pushing the envelope, like top down, bottom up, I think is very interesting, like what Cardano have done, like CBDC to connect to a DAO infrastructure. I think th that uh, for governments to have a balance, anything good taken to the extreme can be bad. So I think in balance, I think a lot of people are very extreme in blockchain and they don't, it's hard to see the middle ground. <laughs> so I think for us, for me, always finding the balance, I think for our middleware in 20 years, whether Sandbox or Decentraland is still around, I'm, I'm agnostic. I don't really, it, it's okay if it's not, if it is, if it isn't. So for me, the picks and shovels, it's just pushing the whole industry forward and the Web3 forward for us. I would say liquidity mechanism implementation in enterprises because right now we have a lot of uh, collateral loans for individual users. However, there is still a lot of space for growth from an enterprise DeFi usage. And I do believe that enterprises and their assets and hedge funds, but mostly enterprise clients will move from uh, DeFi, uh, from traditional to DeFi. They will all use crypto as a collateral and they will need our liquidity pools because the biggest problem in crypto right now is obviously lack of liquidity. So I think that the solution comes from enterprise DeFi and that's where I see that no one is really focusing. Yes. Uh, for us, we are living all in other con in uh, different countries and uh, each country has his own, its own regulation of the cryptocurrency and Web3 space. And for us as uh, Web3 specialists, uh, I think it's most important uh, now to try our best to join the uh, governmental groups in order to, to help our governments to regulate uh, the sphere, uh, regulate uh, this um, uh, Web3, uh, Web3 sector uh, with the experience which is gained from us as well. And I wish you our, our, I wish us good luck in that. Yeah, good luck, man. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so you reminded me of my answer. I think a lot of people, are, especially people deep in the space, and I might be hated for saying this, they expect Web3 to solve a lot of our problems, if not all our problems. Um, yeah, I don't think it'll be, it'll be even close to that. I'm very bullish. I'm very invested in the space. But I also know where Web3 will play a role and where it brings value. Um, but also know the things that it won't change. You know, we're st it's still all gonna be operated by humans. We're gonna be building the open metaverse. We're gonna be building all these different ecosystems we're talking about and the utilities of all these different assets. We're gonna be building interoperability. Um, and as long as the same species that built all previous technologies will be building this one, we'll have some of the same flaws, including you know, centralization will exist, in my opinion, just in different forms. We thought Web 2 is going to change, you know, it, it, everything's going to be decentralized. If anything, it made the world even more centralized. Um, but I also think it will be an improvement on the ecosystem we have now um, because the concept of centralization cannot exist as it did before. So uh, that'll be my two cents. Uh, I'm going to be hated for this answer. But I think that's it. We've got eight seconds left, so two seconds each. Where can they hear more about you? Uh, BeyondMeta.Holdings um, and then DigitalValue.us. 5IRE.org and NoteCapital.com. Dexport.io. Just one. That's it. Focus. Uh, NFTTech.com. Appreciate it, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, guys.